All right, guys, so we're getting near the end of the uh, GI system, you know, literally. Uh, so in this video, um, it's more about the, the hemorrhoids and, you know, and if you look at the notes uh, for the GI system, you'll, you'll notice that there was where it goes from the, um, you know, to an early adenoma, late adenoma, to adenocarcinoma. And there's like a progression there, and so we address that, address that also. And um, there's a question at the end, see if you can get it. I, I kind of pause for a second, see if you can answer it before before I actually uh, work it out. Um, it'd, be a, it'd be a true test if you can, um, if you really got it at this point. So hope, hope you liked the video. All right guys, so first question says, a 20 year old man comes to the ED because of excruciating anal pain for the past several hours. Exam shows a 50 millimeter blue tinge round mass at the anal margin. Which of the following blood vessels is the most likely location of the tributary <clears throat> thrombosis? Well. Couple things here. Obviously, we know the diagnosis just based on this and the title of the video is going to be hemorrhoid. Okay, but for the step exam, they're going to they're going to probably either ask you what type you know what type of hemorrhoids, either internal or external, which is pretty easy. But it's more about the anatomy and the mechanism behind it is where they're going to probably put the emphasis. So if you get a question like this, um, be thankful, and then. Because uh, it's one you can pretty much, I think, certain with certainty get right. So, if we're down in the rectum area, um, there's that line they call it the pectinate line. Okay, kind of separates it, pectinate line. And you know, think about this: the cells, and I didn't. I kind of want to do this the first time. The cells above it, we're going to say, are simple columnar, and the cells below it and um, we're, are gonna be stratified squamous. And I'm thinking, I know you're thinking, well, why is he telling me that? Well, I know, that's just pretty much the, the, the kind of a far out there kind of thing, but if I said it first, chances are you might just remember it. So again, simple columnar above it, stratified squamous below it. But a thing called a pectinate line. Now, it, if you have a hemorrhoid, okay, above that, it's, it's called an internal hemorrhoid and if you have a, a hemorrhoid below the pectinate line it's going to be the external hemorrhoid and something you got to know about these is an internal hemorrhoid is not painful okay and then of course that means the external is going to be painful right it's not painful painful because it has um, we'll say visceral innervation and then the external uh, hemorrhoid is going to be painful and then you got to know the nerve okay inferior rectal branch of pudendal nerve okay so right now we just learned a lot of fat it's just a lot of facts okay so again we know from the question stem the diagnosis is going to be a hemorrhoid they're going to ask you a question mainly about the mechanism which we'll talk about in a second but some simple facts are internal is above the pectinate line externals below it simple columnar cells above stratified squamous below internals not painful visceral innervation external hemorrhoids painful and it's innervated by the inferior rectal branch of the pudendal nerve now here's what we really have to know is the blood flow okay Blood comes in, and blood, you know, kind of, and then goes away. So obviously, when it comes in, it's going to be, and this is to the internal or above the pectinate line for an internal hemorrhoid. The blood that comes in is a superior rectal artery, and of course, that blood comes flowing in, flowing in. Then when it leaves, it's going to leave via the superior uh, rectal vein. So that's pretty easy, right? Superior rectal artery, superior rectal vein, not a problem. And now think about this. Um, well, we can tell of, of where the blockage would occur, but just for food for thought, if I had a blockage in the artery, would that cause any engorgement in this area? Or would it, would a blockage over here create a backflow to where there'd be engorgement and cause a hemorrhoid? And I know what you're thinking, of course, the, the blockage has got to be on the vein side because then that would create a backup, okay, uh, which, which would create this type of hemorrhoid. But let's finish out the anatomy piece first. So on the bottom, or the, where the external hemorrhoid, or below the pectinate line, it's going to be the inferior 
rectal artery. And then going away, we can say, you know, I've seen this two ways, and I think, uh, you know, what was it, Pathoma did it a little different way, but you have the inferior rectal vein and middle rectal vein, kind of either one. And of course, that's blood, so blood comes in on this side, okay, and goes out on that side, but you gotta know the names. Again, up top, superior rectal artery, superior rectal vein. At the bottom, inferior rectal artery, and then inferior rectal vein or the middle rectal vein, okay? So that's all you gotta know as far as the anatomy for any type of hemorrhoid. So the question became, said what? It said the guy had excruciating anal pain, blue tinge, so he knew it was a hemorrhoid, but it was excruciating. So which of these causes is painful? Oh, it's this one. It's the external hemorrhoid. So now we have to say, well, where was the thrombus? Now we just talked about that. Would the thrombus be on the arterial side or the venous side? It's gonna be on the venous side because if you get a blockage here, what's gonna happen? All this blood flow is gonna come in, come in, come in, and get backed up, backed up, backed up, and create some type of you know, hemorrhoid per se. So the blockage is gonna be on the vein side of, you know, again, below the plectinate line. So it's gonna probably be either inferior rectal vein or middle rectal vein. So anything with artery in it, we automatically can get rid of. And is it inferior rectal vein or superior rectal, um, oops, sorry, this, or superior rectal vein? Well, the superior rectal vein would have been up here. It would have been not painful. This one's painful, so we know it's external and even by the description, and it's the inferior rectal vein. But you gotta know the artery and the veins to make this work. And then this other stuff obviously uh, comes into play a little bit too. All right, this one. And this is kind of in the GI. It was kind of in my notes. So I thought we'd just kind of cover it. And believe it or not, I had a video the other night, but I said I didn't like the way I, this was, the, the question was actually worded, so I changed it a, a little bit more, a little bit harder. So take a second and see if you can get this one yourself and see where I, and try to see where I was going with it. It says, evidence has supported that the development of colon cancer occurs through a stepwise process with associated mutations. Based on the following flow chart, what is the associated gene mutation that is most associated uh, with the gene 4.01, so right here. Now, you've probably seen this kind of progression, um, perhaps through some other questions or just in school in general. You know, you have normal epithelium that leads to an early adenoma, leads to a late adenoma, which leads to adenocarcinoma. Now, so the question is, it goes through here, this progression. Now, we know that APC is, is called the um, adenomatous, Polyposis, polyposis coli, okay, gene. And if this guy is really messed up, one of the things he can do is is what? He's this is the guy that can do the familial um, adenomatous polyposis, right? Where you got all those polyps, okay, a lot. Okay, and this is, um, yeah, well, it's just a defect, defect in APC. But anyways, normal, normal them to early adenoma by the APC. Um, to go from an early adenoma to a late adenoma, I know what you're thinking right now. You're like, well, that was the question, but I know it's none of these choices, right? Because you've got it by memory that you knew that was KROS. And then from a late adenoma to adenocarcinoma, kind of a, the, this is the bad progression we've known, or we were taught this, as the P53. So worst case scenario, the original part of this question when I wrote it last time would have been is, you know, essentially, do you know the progression? APC to KROS to P53 as you progress from normal all the way to an adenocarcinoma. But the question that I wrote was, and this is kind of a step one level, is I expect you to know this. The question is which, which one of these is most associated with this guy is there any relation is there any relation and so think about that and and see if there's anything you know kind of anything that you could you could think of there you got your answer choice I'm going with this one now why because if you look at these things there's there, when you think of and this is just a good learning point when you think of cancer 
I want you to think of either a tumor suppressor gene, or I want you to think of oncogenes or proto-onco um, genes. Oncogenes promote growth, okay, and tumor suppressor genes inhibit growth. And there's a bunch of different ones for each of these. You know, it goes on and on. And if you look into the whole genetics thing, you can, you know, you see there's a huge connection on this. But if we were to categorize all these guys, you know, what what kind of uh, gene is the A is the APC? APC is tumor suppressor. It inhibits growth. So if you imp impair it, what happens? More growth. KROS. What is he? Well, KROS would fall into uh, uh, the ROS would fall into an oncogene, okay? It promotes growth, and if it's haywire or something's wrong with it, it promotes too much growth. P53 is a tumor suppressor, okay? And so if you look into these, how would you categorize, categorize it? Well, P53 obviously is here. RB suppressor gene, right? It's in the, it's, it's in the name. It's RB, it's RB suppressor. NMIC. Which category would that fall into? NMIC is going to be over on the oncogene side. And then the, the BROCA1, BROCA2 are both tumor suppressors. So really what I was looking for here is do you know the mechanism behind these guys? Tumor suppressor, tumor suppressor, oncogene, proto-oncogene, tumor suppressor, tumor suppressor. So the one that associates with KROS is the NMIC. Okay? One extra step. So I'd say your, your take home point, your learning point from this, unfortunately is, is, is a memory piece, is to memory, is I just kind of put this in the back of your head. And probably what I would do is go through each of these and say, which, what is this kind of associated with? You know, the retinoblastoma, you know, the uh, familial uh, adenomatous polyposis, you know, and associate something with it. And I think, you'll be, I think you'll be okay on this. Some other little things associated with this for the tumor suppressor is the two hit hypothesis, meaning, you got to have them both knocked out for it to be kind of one of those uh, off the rails kind of thing. And if you were thinking about that, uh, the cell cycle and where all this kind of plays into it, you know, if you have the cell, cell cycle here, to go from G1 to the S phase, there's a G1 checkpoint. And to go in this checkpoint here is this thing called E2F. This is the only, probably the only thing I'd kind of memorize. E2F allows it to go through. Well, what happens is if the cell is, is bad, then the RB, like the RB suppressor gene comes over here and says, hey, Mr. E2F, you just need to stop for a minute because we're not going to let anybody go. We're not going to let this cell go. Um, and that's what, what should happen if there's a bad, if it's, it's a checkpoint. You know, it's like if something that shouldn't be there is, it says, nope, not going to happen. So the RB suppressor gene says, nope, not going to happen. But if the RB suppressor gene is defective, what happens? The E2F allows it to go through, allows it to go through, go, 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 go. And then therefore you get replication of a, of a bad cell. Um, and this, this is where the P53 kind of hangs out um, as well. So again, probably take home point. I would learn, I would just have these guys memorized, put something with them. The progression is, this is a very, very common question I think on all QBanks. Um, but, but try to think one step ahead of them, see if we can beat them to the punch. Hope it was helpful.